All right, guys, so we are here today to do a Dragon Ball Fusions banner overview. So we're going to be going over, uh, essentially, I'm going to do uh, two, se separate into two different parts. Uh, the first part is going to be the two brand new cards and the new Doken Awakening for Barlot, for those of you who are interested only in the new information. And then I'm going to be going over just the information that pertains to the event in terms of the banner cards that Doken Awaken from the event. I'll touch upon a little bit of all of them, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what each of them has a benefit to but outside of that we're gonna try we're not gonna go over every individual card but let's go ahead and talk about the banner we are over on dbc.space by the way so shout out to dbc.space also shout out to the wiki because i am on both uh, websites for all this information first off the banner summon rates so we have the ssr rates at, at about 18.9 percent or 19 percent for ssrs that makes sense since there are very little ssrs on the banner and banners like this typically they make higher rates because they only come out once in a blue moon they're not in normal pulls or norman summon pools so they're always going to be higher rates or usually going to be higher rates 19 percent uh the main characters that you really want just if you're wondering about that is um barlot is really good pandel is amazing ballpen is good if you need key support Weirus is awesome if you have LRs, specifically LR Gohan, he's really useful, um, or if you plan on going for LR Trunks, but he's really good for LRs due to his passive of uh, manipulating two types of key orbs into one. Kaliza is really good for LR Frieza, he's his best linking buddy. Uh, outside of that, guys, Coroli's decent on a Fusions team. Um, if you pulled him because he does Doken Awaken, which I'm going to go over in a little bit as well, from Broly Metals, which gives him Fierce Battle, so that way he will uh, actually be a little bit more useful um, on a Fusions team. Uh, outside of that, guys, we're going to go ahead and talk about everything else. The Chow Man, Selza, and Janembu, they all suck, so I wouldn't really recommend them. And honestly, Ball Pen, unless you really need the key, she's really not that worth it. Uh, everyone else is pretty damn good. So let's go ahead and talk about it real quick. Let me just see over here. Yeah, so this is all the SSRs right over here. Same thing as the last page. It's just they're all featured here a little bit better. Um, in terms of who you want based on SSRs, they're about 2.1% pull per person or per card. So you have a 2% chance of getting the one that you actually want, which is actually a pretty damn decent rate. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the newer cards here first. So we're going to go talk about the Selza. So double the evil Selza. Leader abilities, intelligence type key plus two, attack and defense plus 60%. Uh, his super attack is death ball, causes supreme damage to the enemy and greatly lowers defense. Passive skill, evil essence, attack and defense plus 70% with a high chance of attack plus 30%. In addition, high chance of recovering 10% HP at the start of the turn. So Selza's cool because Selza does do some decent damage and it does supreme damage. The reason I'm just not a big fan of it, uh, high chance of attack plus 30%, which would give him attack plus 100% and high chance of recovering HP at 10% of the start of turn. It might have been a little bit broken to give him that guaranteed 10% HP recovery. Uh, overall, not a horrible unit. I don't think it's the most amazing unit, though. Link skills are Brutal Beatdown, Nightmare, Shocking Speed, Prodigies, Big Bad Bosses, and Fused Fighter. So it's a very interesting makeup of Link skills here. Nightmare um, and Big Bad Bosses are two key components or two key Link skills for percentage for attack buffs on Villain's team. So that's really awesome that he has that. Um, Fused Fighter and Shocking Speed. Really interesting because, uh, I mean, Shocking Speed can be useful. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's, it depends on who you're running. You need to take a look at the link skills of who you're running. Uh, shocking speed can be useful. Uh, it depends on your team, though. So make sure you take a look and see if that's worth it. And Fused Fighter, for this card, it's really not beneficial. Because, so, if we go back over to the banner and look, um, unless you have, like, Janembu or Saliza, chances of you actually utilizing that link skill is very low. Um, just because, or unless you throw them onto a Fused Fighter team. Uh, if you do throw them on a Fuse Fighter team, hey, that's awesome because then everyone should have that key plus two. But chances are Fuse Fighter team is going to give you a primarily a primary makeup of Super Saiyans because it's a lot more common to have a, a Saiyan, a Fused Saiyan, than it is to have um, someone like this. I'm not saying it's bad that you're not going to want to run them as a primary unit if you have nothing else but like skinny tanks or a Veku or something like that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend him being a primary unit, but he does hit pretty hard. I, I don't uh, have him because I didn't summon, so I won't be able to do any type of gameplay with him. But uh, if you do, let me know how well he works for you. I don't think that he is an amazing unit. I wouldn't run him myself, but I can see him sort of being viable maybe on a Kid Boo team. Uh, anyway, 
Uh, max stats are HP of 8705, attack of 9235, and defense of 3354, with a 12 key multiplier of 135%. No Doken Awakening for this card. Again, overall, I think that of the fusion units, he's good. Uh, but in terms of viability on a team, chances of you running him are very low. I haven't seen many people actually run him or give him praise. So, I mean, attack and defense will 70%, he'll be tanking a little bit. Um, I don't know if this is at the start of the turn, so it looks like it's going to be at the start of the turn, so that means his defensive uh, capabilities might be a little bit higher. Also makes sense since they gave him such a low defensive stat. But uh, let's go over to the next one. Now, this is my favorite card. This is the Fusion Weirus, Unconventional Fusion Weirus. So, Weirus is an amazing card, and he gets a lot of hype behind him. And the reasoning is because of his passive skill. But uh, let's talk about his leader ability first. Physical type, key plus two, attack and defense plus 60%. So met on the leader ability. Super attack, sphere of destruction, causes supreme damage to the enemy and greatly lowers defense, which is all right. That's not horrible. Uh, his passive skill, though, is domination, changes technique and intelligence key spheres to physical and attack and defense plus 50%. So this is why he's really good on LR Gohan team. If you guys aren't aware, LR Gohan gets one additional key per key orb obtained. So regular key orbs is essentially the equivalent to intelligence key orbs from him since he's an intelligence unit. If he gets intelligence key orbs, he gets three key per orb obtained. Now, yes, this does suck because it takes intelligence and changes them to physical, but because he's taking tech and intelligence, that is two-fifths of the field. It doesn't include rainbow. There's rainbows there that's even better uh, because it's, it's a lot easier for you to make those connections. And he turns them all into physical. LR Gohan also gets an attack buff per key orb obtained. That's why he is so freaking viable on that team. Yeah, he doesn't attack amazingly, attack and defense plus 50%, which isn't great at all, but having him there as support off rotation so LR Gohan can get those, this is an LR Gohan-centric team, though. You have to keep that in mind. He is specific for LR Gohan or uh, LRs in general, typically a physical LR, uh, like if LR Ginyu ever comes to global. <laughs> I don't really think he is, uh, but if LR Ginyu ever comes to global, that would be very beneficial for him, and when LR Trunks comes, I'm pretty sure LR Trunks will come since he's a summonable unit, he'll be very viable on that team as well, on a mono hero uh, physical team. So, you could do that if you want to. Uh, Trunks will be doing some decent damage and almost always getting his Mega Colossal attack off. But uh, that's why he is so freaking viable. Link skills are Godly Power, Connoisseur, The Innocence, Brainiac, Shocking Speed, and Fuse Fighter. So not only is he good for the Fuse Fighter team, he is really good at linking with Beerus and Weeses. So if you really like those cards, this will definitely help you out a lot because it will allow them to come together uh, onto one team a little bit nicer. Yeah, typically you're only going to have a Weese and a, and a Beerus linked together uh, because that's all you can really do with those two. But having him, you know, off rotation will probably benefit you at all uh, as well. Plus, I mean, overall, he's just good. Like I said before, I mean, I specifically stated LRs, but any team can benefit from this passive skill if you lack link skills, for key anyway. He's part of both the Fusion and the Godly Dimension team, which is awesome. Uh, max stats are HP of 8520, uh, attack of 8421, and defense of 4464. Has a 12 key multiplier of 130%. Oh look, he has max dupe system uh, set over here. Max dupe system is HP of 13920, attack of 13421, and defense of 9064. Uh, overall, not a bad unit. Uh, his his passive skill really what's, is what makes him stand out as opposed to everything else. I mean, everyone gets supreme damage nowadays. Greatly lowers defense is so freaking common. His leader skill is crap, and his link skills are targeted specifically for Beerus and Weeses. Um, the Innocence maybe not for like Gotenks and I think maybe a couple different versions of Gohan. But outside of that, he really kind of sucks for anything else. His passive skill is the only thing that makes him so freaking awesome. Uh, but yeah, guys, he's a freaking cool unit. If you pulled him, kudos to you. Do not Baba him. He is a good unit. Actually, don't Baba any fusion characters. Uh, even if you have a crappy one like Janembu or whatever the heck his name is, uh, they are really good units. Uh, anyway, uh, the next one we're going to talk about is Saiyan Spirits United Barlot. So this is an SSR variant. I'm not going to really go over this specifically. Uh, we're just going to talk about his Doken Awakening. He is overall not the best unit in the world. He's not going to really be too viable on a mono strength team. But he Doken Awakens with seven of his own medals. Those medals are available from, if this page wants to load, from the Fusions event, the Dragon Ball Fusions event. Yeah, it doesn't want to load for me because, you know, why does Google Chrome ever want to do this right for me? <laughs> um, so it's Dragon Ball Fusions, the Fuse World. There is a new event that's out. Uh, when you go down the path to choose, there's going to be two paths to either go straight to go up against, I think, uh, uh, P Pinnick. And then the other option is to go down, or no, it's Tekka. You technically go after both, it's a super stage. Um, and the other one is to go after Barlot. This is where you get the medals for Barlot in order to Doken Awaken him. Let's go start get this other page getting loaded too. 
Uh, yeah, we're going to go and get all these other pages to load right now because they all decided to crap out on me. Um, so Barlot, when he Doken Awakens, he becomes very viable. Seven medals. It's, it says here zero to two, so I must have had really good luck because I got him. I got this medal to drop for me every single run. I did seven runs and I had all the medals. Uh, I do have him from the last time that this event came around. Really good. Uh, one thing I did want to note also, you're going to want to go up against Coroli for the Pan medals. She's also available from the Black Star Dragon Ball um, GT Saga. If that comes back around, well, it does always come back around, but when that comes around, you could also get those medals from there, so it's not really primary. Um, I highly recommend you guys grinding out Pinnick and Tekka. Those two are going to be you know, decent units for you to run. They're good free-to-play units, let me put it like that. Um, but Barlot becomes a little bit more viable when he Doken Awakens, so I, I recommend making sure that this is that the medals are primary, because even though these guys are good for drops, and you would want to because the event doesn't come around often, still uh, make sure you at least get those seven medals in case you pull him, if you're going to go for him. Now he Doken Awakens into Father and Son Limit Breakers Barlot. His leader ability, strength type T plus 3, attack and defense plus 70% when HP is 30% or above, which is really viable because you're almost never going under 30%. Uh, it sucks that he doesn't have HP. Uh, an HP buff, but you could always bring like a Super Saiyan 4 Goku if you do not have any strength leaders. Uh, this is a really decent strength leader because he's just making sure you attack very well, and if you have some good tankers on the team, it'll help out. And it's not specific to super types, but running him with a Super 120 lead Super Saiyan 4 Goku is really beneficial. Uh, you can technically do it with a Janemba when he comes out, but I don't think that it would be too viable because he doesn't get the buff from that. Super Attack, Spirit Cannon, greatly raises attack for one turn and causes supreme damage to the enemy. That's actually really awesome. I love it that I love those who get the greatly raises attack for one turn. Um, I haven't seen like a double super attack, which I don't know if it's just for one turn. So I'm assuming if you get a double super attack, you're double greatly raising your attack. So that's, that might be a little bit more beneficial. Uh, but whatever, we'll see what happens. I, I, I will probably doke him at some point. Uh, passive skill, join souls, attack plus 15% and defense plus 10% per key orb obtained. So he doesn't really tank amazingly because of his, def I mean, his defensive stat isn't horrible, uh, but he doesn't, he's not a really great tank, but his attack plus 15% per key orb uh, obtained with the mixture of supreme damage and greatly raising his attack does make him a little bit more viable, and it's just per key orb, which means like he would do really well with Weirus, because if him and Weirus were on the same team, they would have the Fuse Fighter, Link, and Weirus would change all the key orbs for Barlot, and Barlot would hit really freaking good uh, with his Spirit Cannon attack. Now, I actually saw someone post up on, I believe it was Facebook, this guy hits on like a double Super Saiyan 4 Goku team with, I think it was like 7 or 8 key orbs for like 400,000, correct me if I'm wrong, at Super Attack 1. So imagine if you threw some dupe system into him um, and threw him up to Super Attack 10, he's probably going to be hitting for a million damage. I could see this guy hitting for a lot, and the method, and it's, he's strength, so he's going to get max crit too. 20 level crit? Man, this guy's going to be insane. Um... He's not like a primary unit. He doesn't get a lot of recognition. He is a good card, though. Uh, it's really just because he is part of the old nuking meta that was only around for like the OG days of key plus three, attack plus 3,000. Uh, outside of that, the nuking meta isn't as relevant unless you're running like an LR Gohan. But um, because he does only do supreme damage, his attack plus 15% per key orb is only really beneficial if you have a full, almost a full field of key orbs, which again, weird. So fusions category team. Uh, and that's if he's going to be your primary. <laughs> uh, link skills are Saiyan Warrior Race, Family Ties, Saiyan Pride, Fuse Fighter, Saiyan Lineage, Experienced Fighters, and Shattering the Limit. So a lot of Link skills over here that are, I mean, <sighs> Family Ties is cool, key plus two, but I mean, you don't need it. Uh, Saiyan Pride is not that common, uh, especially on a strength team. Uh, I mean, we can go over here and look at it real quick. Fuse Fighter, obviously, because he's a Fuse Fighter. The Saiyan Lineage, uh, key plus one. So Experienced Fighters and Saiyan Pride are his two primary attack buffs. And Saiyan Pride, I mean, free, it's really, yeah, it's, it's Bardock and um, Vegeta. And I'm both part of Bardock's team. So, I mean, I mean, I guess Vasha uh, and uh, Vasha and Bardock himself, so both of them are there. And Kaba. So if you don't have any good units, I'm just, like, trying to figure out a good way to run him on a team. Bardock is, the Super Saiyan Bardock is definitely going to be a staple in your mono hero strength team because of his passive skill, and I guess if you're lacking units to run on a Super Saiyan 4 Goku team, then you could run Barlot with Bardock, and Bardock will be off rotation, you keep Barlot with, paired with someone else, maybe Fasha if you don't have anyone else good, uh, Fasha also has Saiyan Roar, so you might have her um, on the team with Super Saiyan 4 Goku if you don't have Super Saiyan 3 Goku to hit that link skill off. Um, you know, it, you might run things like that, who knows, I don't know exactly how you're going to want to set it up, but there are certain link skills, if you don't have the optimal link skill set, you can make compromises with cards like this. Again, not a horrible unit, 
max stats are HP of 9021, attack of 8095, and defense of 4531, 12 key multiplier of 140%. Uh, solid unit, really like him. Uh, Father Son Limit Breakers, bar a lot. So if you pulled him, he is a really decent unit. He is a higher rank of the cards that are available on this banner. Now, these are just the new cards that are available per this release. So if, if you guys were just looking for that information, that's where this is going to end for you. I appreciate you stopping by and watching the video. Make sure to like the video if um, you know to, to help me out over here. I'm going to go on to all the older cards just so that way I can mention them in this video. So if you want to stick around for that, feel free to do so. Anyway, uh, we're going to move over to the Fusion of Coroli. Coroli, I'm not going to go over the base SSR. Uh, he is available. He is a decent unit. He Doken Awakens with 35 medals from Berserker of Destruction, which is really awesome. When he Doken Awakens, he Doken Awakens into Beyond Destiny Coroli. Uh, tech type is Attack and Defense plus 70%. Supreme Damage, Rare Chance, Destan, Passive Skill, Courageous Soul. Attack plus 80%. Um, the new meta, maybe he should have Attack plus 100%. 20% additional would be freaking awesome. Um, oh, he doesn't have... Um, it's weird, because he Doken Awakens with uh, the Berserker of Destruction medal. Um, oh, wait, maybe this is... Is this the one that's the Goku medal from the actual... Uh, yeah, this is... Oh, no, it is. Yeah, this is, that's weird that he doesn't have sh um, Fierce Battle. So he's shattering the limit. That's so freaking odd. Anyway, um, sorry about that in the earlier of the video. Link skills are Super Saiyan, Saiyan Warrior Race, the Saiyan Lineage, Berserker, Fuse Fighter, and Shattering Limit. Overall, he has really, really good freaking uh, Link skills, and he is a super, like, he's a super type, which means he's a hero type. So he has Super Saiyan, Saiyan Warrior Race, Saiyan Lineage, Fused Fighter, and Shattering the Limit. These are all decent Link skills for a Fused Fighter team. Also, decent Link skills for a Mono Tech team. So if you have a Mono Tech team and you're just starting out, he will be a really good unit to run on there because of that attack buff. And it's percentage based, so if you decide to feed tech orbs into him because of how many we should have, he's going to be hitting a lot harder. Um, it's part of the fusion category, as, uh, as I stated before. HP, max stats are max stats of HP are 9756, attack of 8095, but a little bit lower, and defense of 4163. When you get the dupe system buffs, it becomes he will become a lot more viable. And he has 12 key of 135. Would prefer to see something like 140, but 135 is nothing to like to scoff at. So overall, really decent unit. Um, solid, solid unit. Just make sure you doken awaken him because his undoken form isn't as solid. Anyway, next one is Warrior Girl with Strong DNA Bullpan. We're not going to go over the base form. She Doken Awakens with the um, Pan Medals, seven of them, that you get from this event or from the GT Black, uh, Black Star Dragon Ball event. She will Doken Awaken into Proud Bloodline Bullpan. Her leader ability is H uh, agility type HP and defense plus 70%. Supreme damage to the enemy. Passive skill, grand wish. Key plus three for all allies when HP is 30% or above. Unbridled key plus three, which is very useful on certain teams that don't have good link skills. Her link skills are um, Fuse Fighter, GT, Battlefield Diva, More Than Meets the Eye, Shattering the Limit, The Innocence, and The Saiyan Lineage, which is freaking phenomenal. She gives key plus three for all allies. She has Fuse Fighter, GT, which is key plus two, Battlefield Diva, which isn't too viable unless you're doing like a, um, uh, what the hell is that, that the, the girls team is. Um, that team is really awesome. For Well, this, this link skill is really awesome for that team. Key plus one with Saiyan Lineage and Shattering the Limit. She has so much freaking key. Two, four, six, eight, nine. She gives off nine key. The only thing that sucks is she has no attack buffs for her link skills, and so it's only attack plus 10%, but she's giving key to everyone, which is phenomenal. That Innocence also works really well with a lot of the Go tanks, so uh, that she will have that, and she will have the, wow, Fused Fighter link skill. So she'll have go, the Innocence and Fused Fighter, which does really well with a lot of the Go tanks. Peppy Gals is the name of the category. Um, she's also part of Fusions. Oh, I forgot she is part of Hybrid Saiyans, so that means she'll be really well. She'll do really well for LR Gohan because she'll be giving that unbridled key. So that's awesome as well. Um, overall, I think that key buffs are now a little bit more deprecated for passive skills than the attack and defense buffs, just because link skills are really awesome. But that also is assuming you have the good cards that link well. Uh, max stats are HP of 9021, attack of 7801, and defense of 4898 with a 12 key of 130%. Overall, this card is not meant to attack very hard. She's just meant to give key to everyone. She is a key source, kind of like the Kaioken Goku, but the Kaioken Blue Goku also, like, he does attack really well. Um, the last one we're going to talk about, because this is the less useful unit I find, is Pedigree of Justice Pandel. Um, we're not going to go over her base form, but she Doken Awakens with seven of the Pan Metals as well. When she Doken Awakens, she becomes very viable. She is an energetic fighter, Pandel. Leader skill is intelligence type, HP and defense, plus 70%. Super attack, Maiden Blast, supreme damage to the enemy, passive skill, whoop of victory. Attack plus 30% for all allies, unbridled 30% for all allies, really freaking viable, really, really good. 
Playing skills are same lineage in fighter, battlefield diva, fused fighter, shattering limit, and GT. Unfortunately, she doesn't have all the link skills like Bullpan has. Or is that not Bullpan? Is it Bullpan? Um, uh, Bullpan. Yes, it is Bullpan. Uh, but it's still all right. She gives same lineage as a key plus one, which is a little bit all right. In fighter again, decent. Um, not horrible. Not great. It's not a lot of you. Not a lot of people have it. I would give it like a low B rank. Uh, in terms of leader abilities, Battlefield Diva again for Peppy Gals category. Fuse Fighter, which again, really good for fusion for fusion teams. Shattering Limit and GT. GT definitely is very viable for her to have. Uh, ca ca uh, categories, blah, I can't speak. Peppy Gals, Fusion, and Hybrid Saiyan. So she's really good on a Hybrid Saiyan team. Another one who's really good for LR Gone because of that attack plus 30%. Oh, I want her. I don't have her. <laughs> Max stats are HP of 86.53, attack of 78.74, and defense of 49.90. Uh, she has a 12 key multiplier of 130%, and it looks like someone has actually maxed her out. We have total potential system of HP of 13,653, attack of 12,874, and defense of 9,990. Overall, decent unit. I would definitely recommend keeping her if you have her. Make sure to Doken Awaken her, grind her out if you have that, because attack plus 30% for all allies. She can be run on any team, even if she doesn't get the buffs from the leaders. She is making sure your good units hit even harder. So, um, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and jump back over here just so I could speak about this again. I hate how the freaking Chrome loses my freaking the websites that I'm on. <laughs> um, so she is a good unit. Uh, all these cards are really good units. Again, like I had stated, just to go over it one more time because it's been a 20 minute video. Weirus is Weirus, Barlot and Pandel are really good. Um, Caroli and Carriza are definitely two good units as well. Uh, I know I really didn't talk about Carriza. But he is a good unit for LR Frieza. He links very, very well with him. He doesn't have a Doken Awakening. Um, he does have Supernova, Strength Type, HP, and Defense plus 60. He causes Supreme Damage. Attack plus 70% when launching a Super Attack, so he's not horrible. Uh, universe is most malevolent, strongest clan in space, thirst for conquest, fear and faith, fuse fighter, metamorphosis. So he's a really good unit for a villains team overall if you don't have good units. And he's really good for LR Frieza. He's actually good for a lot of Frieza units or any Frieza clan units. Um, so that's why he's a good unit. He's just a little bit outdated. Um, he has, let's see, calculations, 130% 12 key multiplier, which isn't that great. Uh, but overall, he is a good unit because um, a, a decent unit. Uh, again, that's it. The Chow Man sucks. He just sucks. He is an AoE, but he sucks. I don't recommend him. And this guy over here, the Janembu, is... I don't like him. Uh, I really don't like him. Attack enemies, attack minus 30%, so he is a debuffer that can be useful on a damage reduction team. Supreme damage, lowers defense, tech type HP and defense plus 60%, brutal beatdown, berserker, shocking speed, Majin, infant regeneration, and fuse fighter. So, I mean, like, I guess shocking speed, brutal beatdown, and Fuse Fighter. Three decent link skills, I guess. Uh, yeah, they are decent link skills, I'm not going to lie. But, I mean, outside of that, Majin is for a Majin Blue team. Berserker almost never goes off, and when it does, you're almost going to die, so chances are you're going to need a sense of being to heal. I think Berserker definitely needs a revamp. I've said this before in previous videos. Um, I don't think he's a good unit. But, uh, overall, that's just my opinion on the matter. Let me know what you think down below in the comments below. Uh, but overall, guys, let me know if you guys pulled on this. I'm still debating if I want to do some summons on here, but it is a good banner. If you haven't pulled on this already, go ahead and do so. Guaranteed SSR pull, uh, pull, uh, there, guaranteed SSR per pull, um, and you have a really high rate of like 20% for, almost 20% for uh, SSR. So you're almost guaranteed two per, per summon, you know what I mean? Uh, but good luck. Let me know what you guys pulled down in the comments below. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you are new, and I'll catch you all later.